Good evening. What time is it, Dan? Uh, my work? Oh, hey, I am working. Uh, I don't know. It depends on if you came from Asia or Australia or whatever. Anybody on jet lag mode still? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this poor soul right in the front. And he, he's kind of like, you know, we will promise to put you to sleep. So we'll, we'll help you with that. So this is the <clears throat> hot yoga session, right? It is. It is. All right. So I lied. We're actually going to wake you up. <laughs> you guys still having a good time? All right, good, All right. good. We got some good stuff today. Uh, we talk quite a bit about uh, TypeScript in most of our Angular talks, but we never really take a step back to look at why do we use TypeScript and what is the real value <laughs> add here. And quite frankly, TypeScript's pretty huge, right, Dan? A lot just of features? A, just a little bit. There are just a lot to do, and we've got a five-hour course on this. I think of a plural site we did years ago. But quite frankly, there's certain features you just need to know about to use TypeScript with Angular. And you don't need to know everything. So we're going to talk about those features today, right? Yes, we are. So if you don't know, nobody knows who John is probably, but uh, just in case, John Papa, introduce yourself real fast. Hi. There might be one person. My name person is John, and I've been, um, I forgot who I was. Yes. Good. Yeah. I'm a web developer, and I've been <laughs> talking with Dan for about 10 years now. We've been talking together. At least. Yeah. Yes. I thought maybe someday when I grew up, I could be as tall as Dan, but it just didn't work out. <laughs> And you'll find, if you haven't seen one of our sessions, we're like the worst comedy duo ever. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's good for the, yeah. These are the like jokes that like, comedy. Awesome. the only place we're funny is here. We go home and our wives are like, stop. Yeah, just shut up. <laughs> you know, reality hits. But so what are we going to do, John? I feel like Vanna. Hey, show us, John. <laughs> so we're going to talk about TypeScript in general. Uh, first, we'll talk like why TypeScript, what is it? Dan and I are huge on the... Don't use something unless you know why you're using it. Just because something's new doesn't mean you have to do it, right? Uh, sometimes it feels cool to play around with it, but we'll go and start talking about that, and then we'll share some links to all the demos we're going to show today, so you can have those, including the link to this deck. So uh, get your cameras ready. In a couple slides, we'll be showing you the link to how you get at everything. And then we're going to do some live coding. <coughs> uh, instead of going through a bunch of slides, Dan and I decided we figured we'd exercise his fingers today. Well, John might exercise as well, but... <laughs> with my keyboard, which is always fun. So yeah, we're gonna, uh, we do have a lot of slides in here, so if anybody is new to ES 2015 general concepts, uh, we're gonna introduce those. We're gonna tie it kind of into how it works with Angular. It does happen to be an Angular conference, right? Yes. So we will first show kind of the core features in the live coding, but then we're gonna jump over to like a Hello World type project, and uh, we'll give you a little more details on why you should care about some of these features and where you'll use them. All right, so if you go to this link right here, you can get to the slide deck. Um, this TypeScript ES 2015 in 60, although we're gonna try to do it in 50, I believe. So uh, give everybody a moment to write that down or take a picture or John can take a picture and while we're If you're gonna take it. a picture of us, I'm taking a picture That's of right, you. That's right, we got the camera guy right there. <laughs> Feel free to be as weird as you'd like to be. <laughs> All right, so we'll uh, put this back up at the end in case anybody else uh, didn't get it, but there's a lot of slides in here that we're not going to go through, but we wanted to give you some uh, kind of solid content you can review. So feel free to check those out, and we'll kind of go from there. So we jump in. It you sounds ready? great. You excited? I am thrilled. He's thrilled. I can tell. Nothing I'd rather do. All right, so once you get to that, you're going to, uh, there's a bunch of links. So we have some kind of ES6, ES 2015 samples, some TypeScript, just pure TypeScript demos. Uh, we're not actually going to go through those, but they're for you afterwards, if, especially if you're new to this. Um, and then John has a really nice event view app, and then I have kind of a corresponding one called a jumpstart that um, we both use TypeScript. Yep, these are more conclusive demonstrations that you can use uh, afterwards to kind of reinforce these. But we're going to do uh, some uh, hands-on coding instead. What are we going to cover? What are we going to cover? I don't know. I don't know. We just figured that out this morning, right? Um, so we're going to start off with, first off, why, you know, why TypeScript? Um, I was recently at a company out in, uh, actually recently, as in last week, with a company out in Pittsburgh. And uh, there happened to be a, a gentleman in the group that is heavy, heavy, heavy uh, JavaScript and ES2015. And when I introduced the TypeScript concepts, it was one of those, I, I saw the eyes roll a little bit, which I think means he was really excited. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, um, but by the end of it, he was like, okay, 
I, I can see the value here. Um, You're but it's, always so good at picking up on those social cues. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, he might have been excited. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to uh, introduce, you know, why do John and I think that there's actually a very solid case for TypeScript and why you should care. How many are actually using it, by the way? I'm sure a lot of you. Oh, everybody just came for fun. Awesome. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, why don't we just stop and do a dance party? Yeah. Woo. No, you don't want oh that either. Gosh. You want to see bad comedy. <laughs> the bad comedy is better than bad dancing. But um, we are going to go into a little bit. I think what confuses, and I know John and I both were like, this is kind of confusing when we first started. And that's the concept of modules. So we're going to talk about how that works. What else we got, John? Can you, can you read that for me? It's... I could read it for you, yeah. We have a lot of class stuff to talk about. So functions, classes, properties, prototypical methods, uh, auto-initializing constructors. There's a lot of cool things you can do with class structures, as well as getting to interfaces and all the types that you can create with TypeScript. But types are optional, which to me, if they're optional, shouldn't TypeScript just be called script? Maybe. What else we can talk about? Yeah, so we'll also get into uh, some of the really cool little shortcut functions called, you might hear arrow functions, or some people call them fat arrow, or lambda, or things like that. We're trying to follow the code of conduct. Don't call them fat arrows. Yeah, right. Yeah. We don't want to offend the arrow. But uh, <laughs> template strings, um, we're going to get into that a little bit. That plays a big role, obviously, with our components in yes. Angular. Um, and then uh, when we get to modules, actually, destructuring plays a role there. I now, love me some destructuring. Yes, Destructuring yes. is very cool. Now, last two, we'll see how time goes. Um, these are really simple things you can do, but uh, a good example of REST parameters, John, would be like what? Pipe and the pipe transform? Yeah, the pipe transform. So you and could use we'll them We'll touch there. on a few other things too along the way, like decorators and stuff, but these are the kind of the core features <coughs> of TypeScript that we're going to focus on. Now, we're not going to have time to go into maps and sets, and that's, not, that's something you may or may not use actually in Angular. It's available, but uh, we're not going to go into that particular aspect, but we do have some slides. So let's answer the all important question, John. Why? Why TypeScript? Like, ES2015 is great. You can use Babel, 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 whatever you want to call it, right? So Every time. I know. Now I don't, <laughs> now I don't even know how to say it for real because I have three ways. But <laughs> So when you use JavaScript, a lot of times you go to a company, like we do consulting and we do training, and we talk to a lot of different people, like all of you. And some of you <clears throat> may have encountered somebody who's like, you know what, JavaScript is awful. Have you ever heard that? JavaScript is a mess and it's awful, you know? Uh, we don't feel that way. We love it, but sometimes it feels a little difficult. So we kind of consider TypeScript to be guardrails. And by that, we mean sometimes you're driving over a bridge somewhere, right, or across the bay, and if there's guardrails up, you feel pretty good, you know? You feel safe, because in case you want to go ram into the side, it's okay. It's going to keep you on that bridge. That's TypeScript. JavaScript is like, we don't need no guardrails. You want to go off, go have a good time, right? But you can get across the bridge. JavaScript will let you get from point A to point B. But if you feel like going into the bay someday, have a good time. And, you know, those that have been, uh, both of us started with JavaScript back in, well, it was actually LiveScript when I got started, which sadly is dating me a little bit. Wow. I know, oh, come on, man. <laughs> but uh, I think those that have been doing JavaScript a long time, you're like, hey, I'm good. I don't even need guardrails. Those, how many come from kind of a server side background, though? Anybody in here? A whole bunch of you, yeah. And, you know, you might be using Java or Python or uh, C Sharp or something like that. And you're kind of used to the guardrails. <laughs> and then you go to the JavaScript world, you go, what the, you know? Um, like, where's my help here? I need my little crutch that helps me stay on the road. So we'll talk about how TypeScript does that. Uh, another big thing, uh, and I think this is something that is just not going to go away. You know, they're doing these kind of yearly release cycles now for language features. And we're always going to be playing this catch-up game. So whether you use uh, Babel or TypeScript or something else, there's always going to be this need that, hey, there's this really shiny, cool feature. John wants to use it because John loves shiny little things and, you know, using those. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, when we go to use that feature, you're like, oh, shoot, I can't use that. And if you've ever worked with a framework where your company maybe moves at, we'll just call it snail pace, and you're always like a year or two behind because it just moves slow. Well, that's the challenge we've had with ES 2015, some of the ES 2016 things. TypeScript can help with that. As an example, we're not going to show it today, but async await functionality, you can use that today in TypeScript. Maybe we example. will. Maybe, Maybe we will show async. Maybe we will. I don't know. <laughs> what else we got, John? 
Well, one of my favorite features of TypeScript isn't even the language, it's the tooling. I love editors, I love to code, and I assume you all do too. What I don't like is when I'm coding and I make a small mistake and I don't realize it until the product goes live. That's not fun with JavaScript, but it does happen. So with TypeScript, it enables the editors and all the tools out there to build things like the cool language services that we have or the other uh, interactions that VS Code and Atom and WebStorm have where they are able to look at the code and figure out you were supposed to pass an array here, you actually passed in a function. That's probably not what you wanted right at dev time. So to me, the tooling experience is the number one reason I use TypeScript. It is, uh, and if you're new to TypeScript, I think one of the things to kind of get thinking about is that TypeScript is all about dev time, right? It generates, well, you can go all the way back to ES3 if you want to go back to like Tyrannosaurus Rex days, but uh, ES3, ES5, ES6, ES2015 uh, code. And so, you know, a lot of people when they're new to TypeScript, they think, wait, how does this work in the browser? And the answer there is it doesn't. A lot of stuff will show you, you know, JavaScript has no concept, the browser has no concept, so TypeScript will allow us to write it that way and then uh, compile it down or transpile it to typically ES5, right, today, but that, that'll change yep. here in the next few years, I suspect. So we'll show you some of this as we go along. Yep. All right, so the bottom line is, hey, the future's looking pretty good with ES2015 and higher. And TypeScript, as you're going to see, is not its own language. And that's, that's something we didn't put in the slide there, but that's kind of a good point, right? TypeScript is not like some of the languages out there, uh, CoffeeScript, Dart, and others, where you write it in this one language, but you can't necessarily take just regular JavaScript and use it, per se. With TypeScript, you can, because I think of it as ES2015++ is kind of my thought on it, because we can do a lot of cool things. So, all right, so let's walk through that. What is TypeScript, then? What is TypeScript? <clears throat> well, ES5 is a very old set of JavaScript. I think eight years ago now? Give Something like that. Yeah, so it's been around for a while. And it took a really long time to get from there to what was known as ES6, which turned into ES2015, which, by the way, doesn't confuse anybody, right? <laughs> what do you do? You subtract, like, 2009 from every number, I think, to get it? <laughs> That's how you remember? <laughs> anyway, the yearly release cycle is a good thing. I do love that, but then the years kind of get confusing. But the good part here is the ES2015 was a massive jump from ES5. It's a superset of all those features. And then built on top of that, obviously, is the next iteration of, of ECMAScript. And then on top of that is where TypeScript steps in. Now, this is mostly accurate, right? Mostly accurate to the point of TypeScript <coughs> is a superset of all these features, but it also adds a couple of extra things. So the two real advantages of TypeScript here in this case are one, it adds things that ECMAScript probably has no intention of adding, like optional types, interfaces, yep. right? Generics. Generics. Those things are kind of put in there, but the cool part about TypeScript is even if you don't want to use those features, TypeScript looks at the standards committee's decisions and says, okay, once things get to a certain category, and I forget the numbers on them, once it gets to the category of, we are absolutely putting this in the JavaScript spec for the next year, because there's no turning back from that, and they've never turned back from it. TypeScript team looks at it, Anders Heilsberg there creates it, says, okay, team, we're gonna go put that in TypeScript now. So we're able to use the features as soon as they are agreed upon in TypeScript before they ever end up in the JavaScript product. Exactly which is super, super cool. And this is kind of that, we call it future-proofing your app. You know, you're able to use these modern features today rather than waiting a year, two years, whatever it is when all the browsers support it. Because so. developers love to wait years to use features, you know? We do. I always loved it when I was at a company and you're, you know, still writing like VB6 or something. But VB6, wow. <laughs> all right. So a lot of you have done it. We'll go through this part pretty quick and we'll show this actually. But, you know, how does TypeScript work for those that maybe haven't done it? Uh, TypeScript is all about, you have a TS file, although you don't have to. You could even write JS files and run them through this TypeScript transpiler or compiler. But we have this thing called TSC, TypeScript compiler, and it will take your TypeScript code and generate whatever you tell it. Now we're going to show how that works with a configuration file here in just a moment, but this will actually generate your typically ES5 code. And what's nice about it is whether you're a command line person, you, know, you could leave the command line up and just have it sit there and watch for changes and auto do this compilation. Or, you know, maybe you have an editor that as soon as you save a file, it automatically does the transpilation process. Regardless, you can have your cake and eat it too. Doesn't matter which world you like to live in, this will work there. 
And whether it's, you know, WebStorm or VS Code or Notepad, okay, maybe not Notepad, uh, or, you know, Visual Studio, things I, like that. I hear Notepad++ is making a comeback. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, Dan, what if you want to set up a bunch of options for TypeScript, how to configure it? Can you do that? You can. Um, as far as the compiler options, in fact, that's probably next. Um, you can pass in a lot of different options. This is a little more geared towards your Angular uh, V2 and higher yeah. type of compilation overall. There's a little bit in there we could tweak, actually. But you'll notice, for instance, the source map. So if you're new to this, this is how you can tell the compiler. I want debug uh, symbols. So, so you can, can debug TypeScript. Yes, which, uh, you know, I think the two things, for those that are new and maybe you're still kind of fighting management on this, the two things that are these like horrible rumors that get spread are number one, TypeScript is its own language. No, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. I can take your existing ES5 code, plug it through this uh, TSC compiler, and just, it works. Uh, now, depending on how strict I am, we can catch errors. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's kind of one of the big things I hear a lot with various companies is, oh, well, I heard TypeScript is, you know, it's its own language. No, it's, it has its own language features, but you can use ES5, even ES6 code with it. Um, the other big one, as you kind of just mentioned, is debugging. And how many times have you heard, oh, I'm not going to use TypeScript, you can't debug it. Can't debug it. And can you? Can't happen. Okay. Never mind. You. you can't, apparently. So, no. <laughs> yeah, you just open up the browser, and as long as your source maps are turned on, you can just search for the TypeScript files, set breakpoints, walk through it. It's really cool. One thing I want to point out real quick, you can be very strict, or you can be very kind of loose with how it compiles. Um, you'll notice the no implicit any as an example. We'll, we'll talk about types here in just a moment. If you don't even want to use types, which then it's called script, I guess. Yep. Um, then you don't have to. That's what's really nice about it. You can use as much or as little as you want. So if John said, you know, Dan, I don't like these interfaces. I love interfaces. So does John, but nah. we're going to pretend. Role play. Okay, I'll role play. Yeah, play with me here. Um, the interface <laughs> itself is not required. And so again, if you don't want to use types, don't use types. Now, I think you'll find that, especially on larger projects, you're going to like a lot of these features we're going to jump into right now, but it certainly is not an all or nothing approach. It's take as little as you want or as much as you want. Very cool. All right. Should we jump in? I think we should do a demo. Time for some code? All right. All right. Now, um, as a heads up, there are, for those that are new to ES 2015 and TypeScript and things, I'm, we're not going to go through them, but we have a whole bunch of slides and you know, we thought we'd just bore you to sleep here for the gentleman in the front that's jet lagged. No, we're not going to do that. But you will have this as a reference. So for those that are new, feel free to refer to them. Death by slides. Death by slides, yeah. a hard way to go. But all right, let's jump on in here. So John, what should we do? So, well, first off, where are we, I guess? Where are we? Uh, we're in Utah. <laughs> okay, that's good. And we're at the TypeScript Playground. <laughs> TypeScript Playground's a cool little place. It's like a REPL in the browser where you can type <laughs> TypeScript on the left, and it shows you the transpiled JavaScript on the right. Now, we just gone through a whole session here of how you can configure TypeScript to emit you know, ES5 or ES2015 or 2016. Uh, those options aren't here so much unless you get into the Options tab, but we're going to leave the defaults on. So we're going to just show you the TypeScript on the left, but keep an eye on what, or sorry, yeah, the left, your left, yeah. So look on the left of the TypeScript, but keep an eye on the JavaScript on the right as we do this. Okay, so let's do something really like impressive for those that are new to TypeScript where you'll go, wow, that makes me want to use it. Want to create a variable? Well, we could do that, <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, age equals uh, 50. So what, is, what is your age, Dan? Uh, oh, that's a wrong language. That's called language dyslexia right there. I was marking it as a long, but anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, TypeScript doesn't have that. No, TypeScript does not have that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, very impressive. Okay, let's do, let's take it up a notch, John. How about this? We'll do the, we did this in our workshop, right? Return x plus y. That's pretty impressive. Look at that difference, huh? Yeah, so you see what we're saying. If you're new to this, I can take your existing ES5 code. John's done this on a real project, a big, yes. big project. And... Uh, why don't you tell that story really fast for those that haven't heard it? Because that's a good sure. story. Sure, and as I'm telling it, why don't you have something use the function? Because yep. that could kind of add to the story, uh, for example. So I, w I wrote a really large app with, along with uh, 150 of my closest developer friends, and this app was all in <coughs> AngularJS and all in uh, Xscript 5. So all that code, you know, we had unit testing and everything else. 
We wrote a bunch of it, it went live, we really vetted it out, but afterwards I said, you know, I wonder, now that TypeScript has this feature where I can actually run the whole thing through JavaScript files through the TypeScript compiler, I wonder if it'll catch any mistakes. And it did. It caught several, many, many, many mistakes. Things like we could show here. Notice how Dan is passing in two and a string two. Oh, shoot, I didn't mean to do that, John. No. That was a typo. It? No. <laughs> so right there, right, that's valid JavaScript. TypeScript says, um, we have a problem with that once you have types on here. And sometimes it can infer what type you're looking for, which is cool, because of the way that you're using the code. Here it couldn't infer it because Dan was just putting the two together. It could have been strings or it could have been numbers. But once you start using implicit types, which we'll show you how you do that too, it can really catch a lot of things. So really, what's nice about this is TypeScript can actually catch issues with JavaScript as well. So right now, we have done only two little things that are TypeScript, of course. We've decorated some types. And you'll notice right off the bat, we get this lovely little uh, error message. We'll zoom it for the back row there. Argument of type two, quoted to, is not assignable. And I don't know if you've done this before, but I know I have accidentally, or somebody's passed something to me where I was expecting a number and you know you got a string or something. Now, on a small code base, you're like, eh, I'll catch that. And you're probably right. Try it when it's hundreds of thousands of lines of code with 100 plus developers. A Little more tricky. All right, so that would be the basics of types. Um, what types do we have? We probably should say that. We have number, string, Boolean. You do arrays, Boolean, and then you could do custom types. You can do classes and interfaces we're gonna talk about uh, coming up here. All right, so what do you wanna do next, John? You're driving here. Let's, get, let's create a class. Okay, what do you wanna call it? Let's just call, what do you guys want to call the class? No, don't do that. Last time it was like unicorn or something? Unicorn. Unicorn. <laughs> Let's create a class called unicorn. <laughs> okay. All right, so in this class called unicorn, <coughs> we're not going to have any properties yet, but look at the right-hand side. How many of you enjoy parentheses? You love that? <laughs> I love iffies. And one of my favorite features is when you have iffies inside of iffies. And how many of you have ever done this? This actually reached the screen. I feel so tall You're today. You're careful, man. I, I don't want that thing falling over on you. How many of you have ever done that? <laughs> nifty. What happens? Any errors? There's no error. It's so much fun when your code breaks and you have no idea what's wrong. No errors in the console. <sighs> Ugh. That's when you're like, I'm in the wrong business. I'm going to go open a bar on the beach and just play guitar. Yep. So Good iffies fish. can be a pain, right? But the nice thing is, the same code you probably would have written in ECMAScript 5 is what TypeScript is emitting, and it's readable, right? Yeah, if anyone's done the prototype pattern, you're going to see it's a lot along the lines of what's called the prototype pattern, where you have that iffy, like John talked about, wrapping and things like that. So, all right, what do we want in our unicorn? Uh, it's going to have a horn a length. Horn. horn length. Horn length. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm guessing horn length is probably a number. Probably. Okay. Yeah. What else do unicorns have? Anybody ever seen one? Well, you gotta have a name. A name? Name yeah. sounds good. Like fluffy. Like fluffy or something. Yeah. Okay. Color. Color. Yeah. Okay. Unicorn we'll color. Make, we'll make that a string for now. All right. So we got a couple properties there. <coughs> okay. Should the unicorn do anything? Will it have any functions? You would hope. I mean, I'm, I'm a little. Something's broken, John. Look at the right. What'd you do? You broke it. Yeah. You broke the internet. What happened to the properties? Why are there no properties on the right hand side? I mean, you wonder. They're not assigned, they're not used, exactly. Exactly. Uh, TypeScript says, that's great, Dan, we love you, but we're not gonna put this over here. So let's say we could pass those in, maybe? Oh, okay. Okay, so let's just, I'll pass in like a len for length. Okay. Name, string. Uh, now we're getting a little long here, John. I gotta wrap. Color, You're string. You're gonna wrap too? I heard Chai did a good wrap the other day. I heard Chai did, yes. <laughs> A wrap that only Shai can do. <laughs> we could not pull that off. So now you're going to pass in, can, just for now, can you change len uh, to horn length or vice versa? Just make them the same? Oh, sure. Yeah. Just for consistency. Because you might want me to do something later, you're saying? I might want you to do something okay. later. Okay. So we've got three properties we're passing in. And Dan, if we wanted to set those three properties, we then have to do what? This dot name <coughs> equals name and stuff like that. Yeah, you're taking key. You're taking keystrokes off my life here. I know. You know, limited keystrokes in life. Uh, Dan Scott likes Hamlin. to type the same thing four times. I do. It's very fun. So we're gonna assign that to horn length. 
You and know, in real name. apps, we do this kind of stuff. We have to put a lot of these things in here. And the nice thing about using more advanced languages like <coughs> C Sharp or Java and some of the others is they have a lot of really cool features built into them. Right now, you'll notice it did emit the three properties on the right-hand side. Yeah, I, well, whatever side it is. The JavaScript side with the properties because it knows we're using them. Now that it knows we're using it, puts them out there. But now Dan loses parts of his life to typing in the same thing over and over again. I do. Oh, I did that again. Did that in the workshop. I'm so glad it saves it, by the way. I am too, because we would be screwed. Okay. So this what is too much say? typing. <laughs> yeah, we'd, be, we'd be screwed. We'd be in trouble. <laughs> All, All right. right. So what do I want to do, John? I want to type I less. I would like you to type less. I love deleting code. Okay. Delete six lines of code for me. You want me to delete six lines of yep, code? That was three. Okay, well, first off, notice I delete, and we've already got some uh, help there. So for those that are a little bit newer to this, even in the browser, we're getting help. But what's the little shortcut I can do? If he just names those as being public, TypeScript will say, OK, I know you want to automatically create a horn length, a name, and a color property on this class. And I'll <laughs> accept in the same named value into the constructor, and I'll auto initialize those properties for you. So if you look on the right, nothing changed over here. Nothing changed. Now we can type little things. And then you can make one of them private if you wanted to as well, right? It'll I still auto-initialize. I could, yeah. We could come in here. And although JavaScript doesn't have public private, TypeScript at dev time does. And, and so cool. Hold on a sec, Dan. You did something really neat. Get rid of that little pop-up tooltip for a sec. Yes. Yeah, cool. So notice it's private. Now do a control Z for a second and make it public. Did the right change? No. Does JavaScript care? No. TypeScript cares. So when he makes it private versus public, TypeScript will then detect in the tooling as he tries to use those properties. If he creates an instance of unicorn later and he wants to use what everyone was private, like color, it'll say, sorry, there's no color that's exposed. But the JavaScript that's emitted is the same. So again, what runs in the browser is the same stuff we always write. But at least in the editor, it warns you, look, you didn't intend to make this public. It'll probably give you an uglier error, but that's what it does. So Dan, you're creating a function. I did. And you have some really strange syntax in there. There's like a crazy back tick. Yes. What, what is, is that? that? I don't know. I've just seen people do it. Man, I was hoping you would tell me. <laughs> yeah, this is a, there's a lot of names for this. It's a, a string template, or you'll hear a string li a template literal, or you'll hear a bunch of names. But uh, basically, it's a new, John likes to say this, is, I think he might have said it in your talk. I don't remember yesterday, but. This is the, the key on your keyboard you didn't know was there. Um, some of you maybe that have languages maybe that use it, but you know, a lot of us are like, I didn't know that keyboard was there, John. But yeah, this is not, uh, if we zoom it in, for those that haven't used it, that is not an apostrophe. That's a, it's a back tick. And uh, have you ever accidentally done that, John, where you put an apostrophe? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. So have I. Yeah, if you put apostrophes there, uh, you get all sorts of red squigglies. It's like, yeah, what are you doing? But this helps you do two things. One. Multiple lines without doing quotes on both sides with a plus sign to concatenate, which is a pain, right? So you get rid of all those escape characters and such. And two, it'll enable Dan to put money inside of lines 10 and 11. Yes. Dan, what's that little money thing doing? What is that little money thing? Yeah, so this is where we're embedding uh, a lot of other languages, especially some of the object-oriented ones, have this concept where, you know, instead of having to do this plus this plus this, you can embed it directly. And you're going to see as we get into the Angular stuff, this plays a big role with our components, right? Yes. Because we can very easily embed uh, lines without this plus this, wrap, this plus this, wrap, and so on and so forth. Now, one thing, uh, what's up on line seven on the right side there, John? Something looks kind of interesting there. The prototype of a unicorn has a get details, but you didn't do a prototype on the left. So a prototype function in JavaScript, those of you who may not remember, because this isn't commonly talked about, a prototype pattern is basically how we can put things like methods onto the prototype of a, of a function or an object in JavaScript. So if Dan creates 100 unicorns, which would be kind of weird, right? Popping up all over the place. Dan creates 100 unicorns. For every instance of those unicorns, they'll get a different name, a different color, a different horn length, because they're all different. But they'll all share one get details. The prototype allows you to not copy and paste, basically, and waste memory on functions. Exactly. So I think the, the key thing here, we mentioned that if you, anybody do the revealing module pattern, prototype pattern, revealing prototype pattern, there's all these JavaScript patterns you can do to organize your code. 
you can see it's being pretty efficient here. It's not exactly how I would, would have done the prototype pattern, but it's uh, actually really close. So it's very efficient on memory, as John said. Okay? So that's cool. We have our, what? We've done properties. And, and by the way, for those that are new to this, I still to this day do this. Yes, me too. Well, except for I usually try to type it right. And uh, you'll notice that that changed everything. This changes everything. Yes. Yeah, so in TypeScript, you'll notice we get a red and it's going, I don't know what you're doing, Dan. Half the time I don't either, but um, it's going to make me say, hey, you need to fix this. And that's a nice thing. That's some of the guardrails that John was talking about you'll get. And when Dan made that mistake intentionally there, you'll notice on the right-hand side, can you, can you put it back real quick? Sure. It actually added the function down below. So it, this is a really important point of a TypeScript. Even when you've got a mistake, it will transpile to the best of its abilities. Unless there's something just awful in there I can't figure out. It's guessing at this point. It's like, you've got a problem. At this point, it thinks you want a function. Because a function definition creates a real <coughs> function. But when you omit the function and do a method with the parentheses, it says, oh, you want a prototype on the class. So it's trying to figure it out for you. So let's go ahead and uh, real quick while we're at it, let's show some other things. Uh, so John, if this was used maybe in an if statement or a loop or whatever, you know, I think most of us are used to the good old var unicorn, but we have some other options for those that haven't done it. We have let. Let is basically a scope level type of variable. Now you have three levels of scope in ES2015. So now you're in, in an if statement, define a variable, but it was already defined outside. You'll know in ES5, that's like danger, danger, danger. But in this world, I pretty much never use var anymore. Um, I won't say I never will use it, but pretty rarely. And what this will let me do now is now we can new up our unicorn. And then I can pass in, you'll notice the uh, different values. And notice I even, I'm told what to pass in. If you have an editor that supports TypeScript, you'll get this type of uh, tooling support here. And we'll uh, jump into some Angular stuff here in a moment and show you that. Yeah, Dan, type those in. Let's, okay. let's give it a length and let's give it a name. Five feet. And leave the color off. Fluffy. So it's telling him he's got a problem still. What if <coughs> this unicorn decides that he or she doesn't want to tell people what their color is? Right? Hold on, they hold on, hold it. on. We got a competition. <laughs> okay, can everybody really quick, like, yeah! One, two, three. Woo! Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. That was a quick commercial break, but back to the. <laughs> that was so much more interesting than optional parameters, by the way. It was. <laughs> People that are watching the, the stream later are going to be like, what the heck? Uh, you probably can't even hear it, but anyway. Yeah, they're going to be like watching it at work in the background. All of a sudden, they're going to have yeah, exactly. headphones. <laughs> then they're going to sue Dan. Probably. For losing hearing. All right, so yeah, there's the air, John. So we don't have a, co is color what we left off? Uh, no, I don't have color. Okay, so color's there. What if we wanted to make that optional? Can we do that? We could. Yeah, we can come on up to here and put a little uh, print C, or print C, question mark. So now it's color. And now we're good. Whoa. So we can do optional parameters as well, which is kind of nice. And then you can detect that and you can set a default value for color as well, couldn't you? You could. Yeah, we could even, uh, in fact, we could take that guy, take that off, and we could say, you know, red or something. It's a give red it a unicorn. Default. I'd like to be involved in your dreams. Yes. <laughs> red unicorn, really? I got some interesting unicorns in mind. <laughs> But now you'll notice I, it's not that it's, oh, and I did it again. Let's go back. <laughs> Somebody should count every time he does that. Yeah, I did this like, like a, four times in our workshop. I want like a tip jar, <clears throat> like I one need of those to, swear jars. I'm gonna have to figure out this trackpad. But anyway, yeah, so now it's, it's uh, kind of optional there because we don't have to worry about it. But as John mentioned, we could do this as well. And that's pretty cool too. Now, I would argue, yeah, here we go. <laughs> I would argue that... Uh, <laughs> you know we can win. Yeah, we're not going to... You know what? <laughs> we're going to be humble and just be like, you know, feel like you're winning. It's, it's all good. But, uh, John, I'm starting to pass a lot in, right? Yes. So what could we do maybe to clean up that constructor? We could just delete all the code. We could delete all the yes. code, yes. <laughs> what so, else could we do <laughs> that might be related to our talk? Oh, oh, related to this. Something more realistic. <laughs> Sometimes you've got a function that's got like 20 parameters. We've got three, so... Stretch with me. 
So we got three here, maybe we don't want to pass in all these different things. And instead, it might be like a settings object or an options object. So we could pass in something like um, options or configuration or just a single object value, right? Yeah. So we could come in and just pass an object. I could just say, you know, I don't know, settings of any. And that mm -hmm. means I'll take anything. Now, that kind of gets now to the world of, well, I don't know, the TypeScript's helping you that much, but you can do it. But what I love is this. John and I are both big fans. And watch the miraculous code, by the way. As I type this, watch the right side for those that haven't used it much. What do you want to call this, like settings? Sure. And I think I saved those, good. Now let me. Look at all the code that's getting generated on the right-hand side by this interface. There's nothing. What do you mean it's nothing? I just spent, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, so interfaces uh, and those that come from maybe a Java or, or .NET background or something like that or another language that supports them, if you're new to this, this is a code contract. It's basically saying that, hey, if you use this settings interface, you must pass me, well, in this case, I guess it would be horn length and name. Color is still optional because of the question mark. So now down in the constructor, we could do this. We could say public settings, colon, settings, and give it that type. Now I'm gonna have to fix this code down here. We'll do that in just a moment. But now what I've done is said, hey, yeah, you can pass me an object, but that object must implement this interface. It must have these features. Now this will play a big role with Angular when you build components and some other aspects um, in Angular 2 or higher. All right, so let's fix this. So we'd have to say it'd be what? Settings dot and settings dot here, and now what do we do, John? I'm, I'm totally lost now. Now we have to create some kind of an object with curly braces. We got rid of the parentheses, but we need curly braces, right? So the <coughs> curly braces, we can say name and color and horn length and put them inside of here. Yep, so now we can give it that. This happens a lot, right? We code a lot where we start off with a single parameter value, and then sometimes we end up with a lot. I mean, I've seen functions with like 50 parameter values. It's like, oh my gosh, what order do I pass these in? Which one is which? And then, heaven forbid, you have one of them becomes optional and you want to leave it out. Do you ever see a function signature where you've got like seven nulls in the parameters? And you're like, which one is which? <laughs> How many have done a jQuery plugin that takes like a gazillion, you know, settings? And you're just like, oh my gosh. This would so help it, wouldn't it? It would so help it. And there's other ways we could do this. We could have made an actual class called settings. Yep. But what's nice about this is look at the right-hand side. This is a, it's like a guardrail, right? If John or I forget to pass these values, and by the way, if anyone has like someone in the family, a little kid that has a unicorn, I would recommend you name it John. That would be a very good name. But... Uh, <laughs> I didn't pick up on that. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, this is awesome because number one, we're not generating code. Now, could we change this to like a class, John? Yes, we could. But now you'll notice over on the, the right, we have a little, well, it's up at the top right there. We have a little bit more code here. Now it's not, doesn't have any properties in this case because I haven't initialized them. Um, but just kind of be aware that you can always use classes if you want. In fact, as a heads up with TypeScript, you don't have to use any of this, right? You could use functions. A lot of people are functional programmers and they like that. But if you are doing Angular, you know, we're covering the stuff that relates to Angular. And Dan, if it's a class, if I didn't actually want to be able to instantiate that class, because it's generating code, right? So if you made settings a class and you didn't want to be able to instantiate it, could we make it abstract? Yeah, we could. So that's another option that you can do. We've got other <coughs> concepts here. We'd have to fix up a few things, but we can yeah. do that. Yeah. So, oh. yep. All right. So now that we covered that, anything else you want to cover right here before we jump to? Let's go to some Angular. Let's go jump in. Um, so let's jump into a project, and hey, it updated again? I just updated last night. I think we'll do later on that one. <laughs> I love to live update my code, like while I'm on stage in front of everybody. In the editor? Yes. It's a good, good thing. So my favorite, by the way, is like Dan and I were on stage one time, and <clears throat> it said, your computer will now reboot in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, because that's going to go well. That might have been a Windows box. Yeah. <laughs> you want to drive? Sure. We'll let John drive. John is actually, I have never met anyone. If you ever watch him code for real, he's like the shortcut master. He's just, he's really, really, really fast. I don't usually make those sound effects, but yes. <laughs> All right, so we're in a, this is a, I'm not familiar with this one. This is a basic Angular app, right? There's like yep. nothing in it. Does it run? That's it. Uh, you'll have to uh, go to the console there. All right, so. Or right click it and do the console. I don't know your keyboard mappings, dude. Yeah, let me open it. Yeah, hold on, hold on. Technical difficulties. 
I think it's the right reason here. I'm so fast is I have keyboard mappings. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead. All right. NPM start. NPM start. So we've already run, because I was freaked out about if internet would work, so we've already run an NPM install to get all the Angular scripts down, and this is the very sophisticated app. The most exciting app you've seen all week so far, right? All is, right. is that waking you up, by the way? <laughs> it's waking me up, whatever that I don't know what's at. doing it, but we should not do that anymore. That's not, yeah. yes. I'm guessing all there's right. a wire around here. So there's some <laughs> weird stuff in here already that we didn't talk about. We've seen a class, right? But why do I have to export this thing? Why do you? It's a good question. Maybe so if modules, I huh? don't export it, let's just go look at the app, right? You have uh, Live Reload on? Uh, I don't know if this one does. I think it no. does. OK. Maybe not, though. So on this one here, we've got a component, and somebody else is using that. So if I go over to App Module, notice that component is now red. It says, John, you're a terrible programmer. You forgot to export this. That right there is saying you can't import something from another file unless that thing is exported. So is that kind of like marking it public in a way? Yeah, it's kind of like a kind super of. public of a class, right? So we export <laughs> things we want to use elsewhere. Generally, we'll export our components because we're going to be importing them to declare them inside of modules. What else is different in here, Dan? Well, we have that weird at thing on top, and we have an import up top. We do. Let's start here. <clears throat> import. Does that actually run any code? Right now, no. No. It's effectively doing something called destructuring. Think about it this way. We're using features of Angular. We have to ask Angular if Angular will lend us properties and objects and things that it has. So we're saying, Angular core, you happen to have a thing called components. And it says, why, yes, I do. And it says, OK, let me grab that thing out of you and import it into this file. So it's destructuring. Destructuring is effectively when you put those little um, curly braces. And it's effectively reaching inside of some other file and extracting assets or symbols. So we're extracting the components. And if we did comma up here, there's other things in here. You can see all these different other things that we can actually pull out if we wanted to. So once we have that, we haven't done anything with it. We just said, give me a handle to your components. And that component is a decorator. What's this decorator? So this is a new feature. Um, very new feature, and uh, those, I think everybody's seen this already this week, obviously, but for those that maybe aren't aware of it, it's basically a function that is metadata. Uh, so if you're new to it, it looks a little weird at first glance, unless you come from a Java background. In that case, you're going, no, that looks totally normal, because uh, they do annotations there. But we call them decorators, and this is going to provide the metadata such as the selector. Now, I had the uh, same group last week. I had a guy ask, you know, a really good question on this, and I know we've got this before, and that is, why not just put properties, you know, one called selector and one called template down in the class? And the short answer is, yeah, they could have done it that way. But now I can focus 100% and keep my code clean down here ra rather than, you know, complicating it with some of this metadata that we have. And so if you haven't used these much and you've just been doing it because you saw a sample that did it, um, which is kind of how we program sometimes, <laughs> then this is all about adding metadata, whether it's here or in a service or what have you. Now, one thing that's easy to forget is the parentheses. Um, there's been several times when I've accidentally just typed like at component or at service or injectable, I should say. And because there's parentheses, that means that thing is a function, yep. right? So yep. it's actually going to execute all that code and it's passing in, hey, look, there's an object that's passing in just like we just showed. Exactly. Cool. So we're saying this component, the thing that follows my decorator, has a selector named app component, and it has a template that says hello world. It's giving this information to Angular before the class is ever instantiated. Another way we used to do these kind of things in AngularJS was with static properties. Yeah. So it's just a, a more elegant way to do it. If you come from Java or .NET, we have annotations and attributes, same concepts. Now, an interesting thing on the import for those that are maybe really new to this, has anybody by chance been confused about the import-export at all? Come on, don't lie. Thank you, honest person. You know? Come on. No. <laughs> so I'll give him a hand for being honest. Um, Woo! Yeah, well, I didn't mean that, but yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. If anybody's hiring, this is your guy right here. He's we have honest. a humble programmer. That's right. It is the unicorn in the room. <laughs> Anyway, uh, and we said this, those that came to the workshop on Monday, Tuesday with John and I, um, we were on a Skype call, what, two years ago or so? We were on one last night. 
Well, we were, yeah. yeah. But oh, the other one. The other one, yes. We're on, we bounce ideas a lot. But um, we were trying to get a car, and then the car was going to import an engine. How hard could that be, right? Now, we were brand new at this point. Modules, the spec had just started kind of coming on the scene. And, and the point of this, we're going to talk about, this doesn't work natively, of course. We have to have something like System.js or Webpack or something behind it. But long story short, I think we wasted hours. Yeah, more, than, more time than we would like to say. And this is with both of us, you know, because we were brand new to it. And so luckily, for those that are just hitting this, maybe even this week, because that's your job to come here and learn about this and then apply it, the big thing here is that, number one, these don't work natively yet in the browser, this import-export thing. But with System.js or Webpack or, you know, if you use the Angular CLI as an example, it's going to hook all that for you. That's actually the most challenging part. I think the, if you've ever done a language that imports a feature or uses a feature or things like that, that's exactly what we're doing. And what I love about this is every file is now self-responsible. Instead of having script, 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 script tags in like your home page and hoping you got those in the right order, now every file imports what it needs. And if you forget to import it, what happens? It doesn't work. Thank you. It does not work. <laughs> So, right. Dan, if I really didn't want to import, could I not just do something like this? Mm, maybe. No, don't save that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wouldn't actually have to import. I could say, okay, I need the component still. My component's defined here. The only reason I was importing was because in this file on lines 20 and 21, I was using the app component. So because I separate my code out in separate files, we have to import. So, as a very intelligent person said to us the other day, or very astute, they said, so John, if I just put all my code in one file, I don't have to import anything, right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> no joke. That is not, he's actually telling a true story there. Um, this poor gentleman had to maintain an existing Angular app, and uh, it was all in one massive file. That's fun. <clears throat> What'd you call it, job security? I call it job yeah. security, yeah. That's right. There's no way they're letting you go. All right, now, here's the cool part, right? Tooling. I love tooling in TypeScript. And honestly, yeah. until TypeScript came out, and then like two years later, it's been like four and a half years now, two years later, the editor started catching up to it and saying, we can tool around this. So this is cool. Over here, it notices there's a class. I can hover over it and put the command key down, and you can see a little tool tip on it. Now, this is in VS Code, of course. Yes. Is there another <coughs> editor out there? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so all these actually, WebStorm, Atom. Uh, I used to use brackets for a while, too. That was a cool one. Yeah, I used to use brackets. Other things you can do is you can go to definition, you can peek at it, you can find all references. That's pretty cool. That is awesome. And Especially on a large code base, right? This isn't, yeah, and this isn't just um, a picture. You can actually edit the thing it's finding. So you can go to any of those files and click on it, and then I can type in something like Dan loves bacon and unicorns. That's not unicorns. Okay. So we can do that. We can go to files. There's a lot of cool stuff in here, and you get IntelliSense. And as you saw, it was smart enough to know that if we didn't export on the uh, left-hand side over here, if we take that off, on the right-hand side, it says, hey, I don't know what that thing is. So the tooling side is wicked cool for all this. Why don't you uh, yeah, fix that? Mm -hmm. You did. Um, take out the import on line four. Is it okay. possible that I don't even have to type that? It is possible. It gets annoying, right? You get all these imports, and it's like type, 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 type. I'm going to save the, I don't know what we did over there, but we're going to save it. Sure. There we go. And we'll close that. Nobody cares about Hello World anyway. So you're saying that there might be something special going yes, on. There might be. There's a light bulb hey. on the left in the gutter. What um, happens if we click that light bulb? It's really tiny. It says import app from app component, right? Or I could hit command dot right on top of the thing with the red line, select that, and look what it does up top. Now That's you'll notice cool. real quick, and John pointed this out, I think you did a lint fix, didn't you, with the mm -hmm. CLI? If you're using the CLI, you can do linting and then it'll fix. Notice it put the double quotes up there, that which might me. be against your rules. Um, what's that? That bugs me. I don't yeah. like mixing my quotes. I don't Let's either. pick one, right? Yeah, that's where we draw the line, folks, you know. 
If you're mixing your quotes. You know, my kids know two things, respect your parents and don't mix your quotes. That's right. <laughs> So uh, with uh, CLI, you can actually do an, uh, a lint fix on that, but yep. right now you'd have to type it. But that's a really cool tooling feature, and there's way more we could cover. Oh, yeah, yeah. But those are some of the basic things you get. Now, could we just do all this with ES5 or, well, in, in the Angular 2 or higher with ES2015? Uh, we could, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I do have some friends. Yeah, I know John has, well, we think there's something wrong with it, yeah. but... Uh, I do have some friends that they, you know, kind of say, no, I'm just going to use ES2015 and, okay, more power to you. Go for it. I like to have the interfaces. We didn't even touch on generics. We can do that. I mean, there's all kinds of cool, these uh, rails or guardrails that we're going to get for free. All right. Anything else you want to show them before we wrap up? Yeah. You want to create a function? Yeah, sure. Let's say we had a function in here called... Uh, Why don't you do know. an ng init and then show on an init interface, actually? Ooh, let's do that first, yep. Then we could tie it back. So let's say we had code we wanted <laughs> to run as soon as things get kicked off. We might create some kind of a function called on init, and maybe it's got a console log, and inside that console log we say, hello, ng-conf. Well, that's just a function, right? Is that function going to run when Angular starts this uh, application? I should have done that in a component, actually. Let's go back to the components. There we go. So over here inside the component, let's say we added the init. Is that going to run when it starts up the component? <coughs> no. It has no idea what you're doing with this function. It's just a function. So there's a cool interface, right, Dan? Yep. And if on I do init. that, if I say implements on init, and then I use that nice little automatic import. Ooh. Isn't that cool? Did you see the top line? Let All me right. undo that. Let me redo it. Everybody seeing that? That's cool. It's impressive, John. Control Z is your friend. So up there, we're seeing how it automatically added in the import. It's implementing the interface, and I broke my code. It's saying, you implemented on init incorrectly. There's supposed to be a property called ng on init in there. The mouse reason, over, do your control oh, mouse over thing on, on init. On this one? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It's an interface. So, well, it shows a little bit anyway. I can go in. We could peek in, yep. yep. You can actually go into the interface of the Angular code just like that and see what it's doing. So now I know that I can't spell it like that. I can say ng on init. And look, it's still wrong because it knows it's not spelled right. And I could type it. But Dan, would this work if I got rid of that? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, what's going to happen when it generates the code? Nothing. <laughs> you know, because it's ES5 code that we're set up for, for this project to generate. It doesn't care about interfaces. It's purely the guardrails. And this goes for your on init, on destroy, your on change, on all those things have these interfaces. And uh, so I and John, we do use and recommend that you know, you, if you're doing TypeScript, you leverage these interfaces. Because I am embarrassed to say it, but I did exactly what John did. It was, it was a while ago. I was young, you know. Um, and I'm going down totally the wrong rabbit hole, thinking the server's wrong, or my service is wrong, or, and it turns out I just had a typo in the dang function, so it never called it. And this will help you out with that. Yeah, it, it's really great. I mean, a lot of people say, well, I don't need the implementation of the interface. My code works anyway. And yes, it will. Is it adding overhead by adding it? No. But it is going to save you, especially when you're not the only programmer on your team. I program on a lot of teams where you've got 10, 20, 50, 100 people. And it's kind of nice to know that you don't have to code review and check all these things. It'll just work. So, Dan, I think that covers most of the main features we were going to talk about here. I think it does. does it There's not? even more. If we had more time, we'd do more. But that's, that's all we got. So uh, if you do have any questions, come on up in just a moment, and we'll do a wrap up here. If you came in late, here's where you can get a ton of uh, content, links, sample projects, pure TypeScript projects, all kind of fun stuff. It's a great way to spend your weekend. And there's a session later today. I think it's a half hour session by Daniel Rossen. Wasser? Yeah. I don't remember. Dan, I'm so sorry. I forget your last name. He's the uh, PM of the TypeScript team, and he's going to show what's new in the latest feature of TypeScript. Thank yep. you so much for coming this week. Thank you. Mm.